welcome to Dessert Week. For your signature challenge, uh, we would like you to make a trifle. You can have any type of sponge or biscuit or custard or cream or whatever fruit filling you like, but you should aim to have sharp flavors. You have three hours for this challenge. On your mark, get set, pick. Let's start with our first element, the chocolate genoise. A genoise is a type of sponge cake that is leavened using only whipped egg whites. It does not use any chemical leavener, such as baking soda or baking powder. It is a very thin sponge, usually, that's cooked in a quart pan. So I'm lining my pan and I'm also using little paper clips to keep the parchment paper in place. Genoa sponge is then over a double boiler where we will whip our eggs and create as much air as possible. Dry ingredients are pretty standard, just all-purpose flour, some cocoa powder, and it's very important to have them sifted so they can incorporate into the whipped eggs more easily. Just a couple of eggs, four of them, very proud to crack them with one hand, and yes, I did get shells. So maybe I should stop showing off and just use both hands. And to the eggs we're adding up the sugar as a stabilizer. And we'll first whip them to incorporate the sugar and then over a double boiler to create volume. It does take a while. So what you can do is what I did, to see if it's ready, you put your finger in the batter and you rub them together to see if you have any granulated sugar not fully incorporated. As long as you can feel the granularity, you still need to whip. It took me a good 15-20 minutes of whipping until the batter was fully smooth. So to our eggs and sugar mixture, we'll incorporate once more sifted our dry ingredients and go through the sides into the center as Mary Berry say you just fold the whipped eggs with the dry ingredients and really try to not overwork it I'm melting my butter in the oven and I put it through the sides to not overwhelm the batter adding the fat if you were to make a jocon sponge you will not add butter to it. The jocon sponge is a fatless sponge, whereas a Genoese has some fat. And then you want to level the batter with either sliding it around or what I'm doing, an offset spatula. You have to be careful to not flatten the batter out. And into the oven it goes for 12 to 15 minutes. During that time, get your husband to be very cute to you. And we move on to the creme pâtissière. A crème pâtissière is a type of custard that uses either cornstarch or flour to be thickened. I'm making mine standard vanilla flavor. I use Mexican vanilla because it's very potent. And I will use only the egg yolks. So I'm separating my eggs using both hands doing the back and forth with the yolk. To the egg yolks you will add your sugar and try to whip them fast when you add the sugar to not quote unquote burn the yolks. Uh, if you just leave the sugar on top of the yolks without whisking it might uh, create little yolk particles. If you want a very smooth texture you can also rub it in your finger to see if the sugar is fully granulated. Then you add your flour, and when you have a pretty homogeneous paste, you can add your warm milk, little by little, whisking to make sure to not curdle your eggs. Transfer it back to the pot and whisk until thickened. I just checked on my sponge, and 
and I put my competition into a nice bath when it has the right consistency. Let's check on that sponge. And it is done. If it bounces back, we can move on to the chocolate mousse. There's a lot of element to that recipe. The chocolate mousse, I use uh, some chocolate wafers because they just melt easily. Put them in the microwave to melt. And to the chocolate, we'll add directly our eggs. Only the egg yolks, because the egg whites we will use to whip and create air for our mousse. Residual heat of the chocolate uh, is what is going to cook our yolks, so it's important to whisk fast so they don't curdle as well. Usually the rule was egg yolks. And yes, I have a stain on my sweater, and that stain is going to stay on until the end. But I didn't realize I had a stain. This is gelatin, that is to stabilize our mousse. You just bloom the gelatin in a little bit of cold water at first. Let it sit for a while while I'm whipping my egg whites. I like to whip egg whites in a very narrow container with high sides. I feel like it's what gives you the best result if you can whip the egg whites faster. Whereas for whipping cream, you need a cold container and I like to have a lot of space or a large bowl. I feel like that usually whips the cream faster. Yes, my dog loves whipped cream, so he's very eager to try some. Sadly, I will need all of it and can't have any leftovers. I am putting to the microwave the gelatin uh, to warm it up and soften it. And I will incorporate it to the chocolate first, because that is the more room temperature elements. Adding to the eggs. So what I'm doing is first adding a quarter of the eggs to slacken the mixture a little bit, making it lighter so it is easier to fold to the fully, more delicately whipped egg whites. And by then the mixture should be more room temperature so it won't split if I'm adding to cold whipped cream. Do take your time, if you're adding the hot chocolate to the cold whipped cream, your mixture will split. It'll have a weird liquid form. And once everything is fully incorporated, you got stabilized chocolate mousse. Have a taste, it is really good. Pretty easy recipe. Next on, the banana rum compote. It's a pretty easy recipe as well. For this you need to make a dry caramel, so just adding a quarter cup of sugar into a pan and leaving it alone for a bit. Take very ripe bananas that you smash with a fork. The riper they are, the better they are. To which we're gonna add some rum. And because we're gonna cook up uh, the rum and banana mixture, really like, don't be shy to add more. We'll cook the alcohol off. So while I'm trying it raw, it's very strong. But I know it's good because once I'm gonna cook it, it will lose that little sharpness of the alcohol. We're taking our sponge and we're cutting it into little rounds to layer it into our container. The sponge is super dry. I think I overbaked it a bit. Which is not the end of the world because it's going to be at the base of a trifle. See, I'm using chopstick to slide it down the little containers. I use little mason jars to have some sharp, clean lines that was required. I decided to go with mini personal trifle because I don't have a trifle pen at home and I was not about to buy one. It's not exactly something I do often. Back to our banana compote. So you just add your banana and rum mixture to your dry caramel once the sugar is fully melted. Swirl it around in the pan and back into the stove just for a little bit. To which we're gonna add a splash of cream or butter. I prefer cream. And then it's done. When it's fully room temp, you add it on top of your generous sponge. And that will 
help a lot with the dryness of the sponge. Tap it on the counter to make sure there's no air bubble and into the freezer it goes. We want this pretty cold for the next step. The next step the next step is adding the creme pâtissière. So I had a taste, it is very good. It always tastes a little wrong when it's hot but cold, it's very delicious. And I'm measuring and layering it on top of the banana compote, cleaning up any little drips, adding the second layer of chocolate genoise, And that was a little messy. I don't think, if I was to do it again, I don't think I'll have uh, two layers of Genoise. And one of our last elements is the coconut jelly. The coconut jelly is pretty easy to make. I used agar agar because it's a little more forgiving than gelatin. And just a can of coconut milk and some sugar. Put it on the stove, bring it to a boil. Agar agar gets activated what? boiling temperature and it's very forgiving again uh, you can freeze agar agar without you know, losing the jellifying properties which you cannot do with uh, animal gelatin and I poured it over the generous sponge same tapped it on the counter to remove any bubble and to the fridge it goes after about 20 minutes in the fridge it is cold and we can add our chocolate mousse Originally, I wanted to have one big dollop of chocolate mousse on top of each, but it turns out that my mason jars were a little more full than what I was expecting, so I made little tiny rosettes on top instead of a big dollop. Topping everything with some coconut flakes, and we're ready. Bakers, you have two seconds left, one seconds left, you are done. judging we'll have our friend Michael back and his friend Andrea who nicely came over to eat some trifle. Trifle is not common for French or Americans so they both never had heard of it and were eager to try. After the first bites the main feedback I got from both of them is that it was a very very rich dessert. Having the custard, the mousse, the compote makes for a very dense and rich dessert. Both preferred the banana compote with the rum flavor over anything else in the trifle. I was happy that the flavors did come through. However, the chocolate Genoese was not their favorite part. It seemed indeed kind of superfluous. And observing the little jars, they both agreed that the sharp lines that were required for the judging were not there. There was some layering, but they were not sharp for sure. So I got some points stuck for it. The flavors were well married, however, neither of them could taste the coconut jelly. And they were pretty happy about this, especially Michael said he's not a big fan of coconut flavor in general, so he was not missing it. But if you're saying it's gonna have coconut, it should taste like coconut, and I have to agree with that. Overall, it was a tasty dessert, it was just hard to finish the whole jar. So we're saying that maybe the big trifle that you serve, you can choose your layers and have a portion that's more appropriate and I have to, to agree with that as well. For the first time I'm very happy with what I've done. It was fun to try something completely new and different. However, I don't think I'd serve a trifle to my next dinner party. <laughs> the banana rum compote, I have to admit, trying the trifle was delicious. And I ended up with the scores of 7 and 6 out of 9. Okay. <laughs> We're done! Thanks for watching and please check out tinyfrenchbacon.com for all the ingredients, amount and recipes.
Bye.